You should learn C. It's a real easy language. I say, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Okay, not really. It is a simple language that will allow you to build anything, but the trade-off is you're gonna have to work for it. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Now the best way to learn is by doing. So follow along, or just download the code. Link will be in the description. Alright, let's fire up a terminal. Oh, I'm on Arch, by the way, and NeoVim, by the way. Oh, you haven't heard of Arch or NeoVim? Well, let me tell you about it. Let's make our C file. I'll call mine main.c. First thing we need is a header, the stdio header. stdio is short for standard input output. We add that by typing hashtag include stdio.h in the brackets. This is a preprocessor directive. All this really does is copy the contents of stdio.h into our C file. So we have access to any method we might need that is in that header file. Nice, we have written our first line of C. All right, we need our main function. This is the starting point of any C program. Every function in C has a return type. For main, it is an int. That is a number like 1, 2, or 99. We name the function main all lowercase. Next are parentheses. These are arguments that can be passed to a function. For main, we're going to have void. Void means nothing, so nothing will get passed to our main function. More on this in a bit, but we can have a couple arguments for our main function. Finally, we have our curly braces. These define our function definition. Everything within these braces is our main function. And so at the end of our function, we need to return an int. For main, zero tells our operating system that our app has returned successfully. Nice, we have written our first function. Let's have it do something. Yes, the obligatory hello world. Remember our first line? Including stdio.h? Well now we can use a function from that header, printf. This function prints to standard output. In our case, the terminal we have open. Now if you recall, main could have arguments. Well, printf takes arguments also. It takes a formatted string. For a string, we need to use double quotes. And we can write any message you want in there. I'll type in hello world with a weird backslash n. The backslash is an escape character. And with the n, it tells printf to create a new line. It's almost like if you were typing in a word processor and you pressed enter. Now most importantly is a semicolon at the end. Just about every line needs to be terminated with the semicolon. Now we are ready to compile our C program. First, I need to figure out how to exit Vim. Okay, I'm back. It's easy, just go to normal mode, which is the escape key, then type colon wq enter. That writes and quits Vim. Awesome. Now since I'm on Linux, I'll be compiling with the GCC compiler. That's short for the GNU compiler collection, which gives us a C compiler. So in the terminal, I'm just going to write gcc main.c and hit enter. If we get no errors, then we have a runnable executable. ls will list everything in our directory. Oh look, we have a file named a.out. Hey, notice the color. My terminal is telling me that's an executable. Now to run this, we uh, run it with dot slash a dot out and hitting enter. The dot slash is telling my shell to look for an executable in my current directory with the name a dot out. Awesome, we see hello world on its own line. If we left off that backslash in, then our terminal prompt would be right after hello world. All right, a dot out isn't descriptive for our program. I'm gonna call it main. Well, not very descriptive either, but we can call GCC with an option of dash O. This tells GCC that I want to name my output. I'm gonna call it main. All right, awesome. We wrote, compiled, and ran our very first C program. You are off to a great start learning C. It's not so bad, now is it? Alrighty then, let's take it up another level and make something a, a bit more functional. Let's make a temperature converter. We will convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa. First thing we gotta do is remove this hello world. We are gonna print out a prompt. A prompt is just to prompt our user what we are looking for. A number, space, then an uppercase letter, C or F. Okay, we need something called variables. It needs to have a data type, and then the name of the variable, and then the semicolon. Don't forget the semicolon. We will use a float for our temperature, I'll name it temp, and a car, or char, short for character. It only holds one letter, number, punctuation, etc. So I'll call it unit, unit for uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Now we need to figure out how to get that information from the user. One way is by passing it to the program when we run it. Remember that I said main can have arguments other than void? It can take two, argc and argv. 
argc is an integer, it is how many arguments are passed to the program. argc is short for argument count. argv is a little more complicated, but it's a list of the arguments. argv is short for argument value. And in another lesson, we will dive into exactly what a list is. Spoiler, it's an array. So if we ran our application with 25.0 and C, those values would be in the argv list. Now argv always contains one argument, that is the name of the executable we created or ran. All right, let's print it out. We will use our handy printf statement. And the double quotes, I'm gonna use percent %s. This is a format specifier that when it parses out our string and finds a percent %s, it will replace that percent %s with whatever we pass as our list after the double quote string. Here's a list of all the different format specifiers we can use. So printf takes in the format string, then a list of arguments that will be replaced. Here we're just going to print uh, the first value of argv, which will be main. Another spoiler, the first item in array is always at zero. I'm going to comment out this print statement here. Oh wait, you're asking what's a comment? Well, this is a comment. Anything after two forward slashes will be ignored by the compiler. So we can write anything after that and it doesn't matter. Another type of comment is a multiline. It's a forward slash star followed by another star forward slash. And anything in between that will be ignored, so it can be on multiple lines. All right, if we compile and run it again, our argv0 is dot slash main. Let's go back to our main.c file. Instead of passing arguments to our program, let's get user input from a function scanf. Wait, hold up. Why did I go through all that just to use something else? Well, we're learning C, so we should learn what our main function can do. Okay, back to it. Much like printf, scanf uses format specifiers. To call this method, we pass a string literal with format input like %f and %c. %f is for float input and %c is for character input or char. I should make a note here of possible buffer overflows if you use scanf with a percent %s, which is a string. A user could input way more than you want and crash and burn the whole program. Another thing to note here is the ampersand in front of each variable. This gives scanf the address, the location of the variable in memory. We will go a little bit deeper into this in another video. But just know this lets scanf actually update the variable with what the user inputs. Let's go ahead and print out with the user inputs and see what's what. Let's recompile and run it. Now it's prompting me for the input. I'm going to go ahead and put in 200.1 and T. Ah, what's that? 200.1000006? Well, that's because floats aren't actually very precise. So if many more decimal places are needed, then C offers double or long double. Okay, back to it. We need to check if the user entered a C. Now this is done with an if statement. The keyword if followed by some kind of statement. This needs to evaluate to true or false. This statement must be in parentheses. We will check if the unit is equal to the character C, and to check equality, we use two equal signs. If unit is in fact an uppercase C, then this will evaluate to true. Now the user may type a lowercase C, which will be okay, but we also need to check if that is also true. We can add that check by adding two pipes, which is or. Then we will check if unit is equal to a lowercase c. This if statement will check if unit is uppercase c or lowercase c. If either of those are true, then we'll run the code within the curly braces. Now that we know the user has input a temperature that is Celsius, we will first print out the temperature. This format specifier here is saying replace this format specifier with a float, our temp variable here. But this is special because there's a point two. What this is doing is telling printf we only want two decimal places. Remember, we are using floats, so it isn't very precise, and for attempts, this will be okay for our purposes. Now we need to calculate the conversion. So we assign a calculation back into the variable temp. This might look strange, but we are taking the value temp and doing the calculation, and then storing that result back into temp. C does have an order of operations. If you want something done first, kind of put it in parentheses. Otherwise, normal rules apply, and C generally follows PEDMAS. We also need to add at least one decimal place to these values. Otherwise, the compiler will think these are integers. With C, if we divide two integers, the decimal places will be just ignored. So 9 divided 5 is 1.8, but if these were considered ints and floats, the result would be 1. The 0.8 would just be dropped. And we would definitely have incorrect values for a conversion. Okay, now with that out of the way, we can output results of the calculation. Once again, we only want two decimal places using percent dot 2 f. 
All right, now we should check if the unit is uppercase or lowercase f. To do that, we create another if statement, but this time we will use the keyword else if. So if our first statement results in false, it will move to the next, this else if, and check it. As long as we have else ifs, the program will go down and check each until there is a true found, or it will just bypass them all. So we will go ahead and do the same thing here, checking if unit is uppercase f or lowercase f. If that's true, we will print the conversion just as before. And then finally, we have a single else code block. If all other if and else ifs are false, this code will be run. If we leave off this else, then it will just bypass everything if they are all false. In this else code block area, we will just let the user know we don't know what they are inputting. Tell them use C or F. All right, let's go ahead and compile and test our code. All right, let's go with the example provided. 25C is 77 Fahrenheit. Nice. So when we enter 25, scan F loads it into our variable temp. And then C goes into our variable unit. All right, let's try 77F. Great. Back to 25C. Perfect. All right, let's try some nonsense. <laughs> doesn't really know what to do, but it doesn't crash our operating system, so that's good. Awesome. Way to level up by doing. This code will be hosted on GitLab, and the link will be in the description. And thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment to defeat that algo monster.